Hey everyone, Tenkara Tanuki sent me another rod to try. Uh, so I got a few guys together and we headed out to the Seneca Creek backcountry to stream test the rod and put this video review together. So let's get into it. The Snow Tanuki 325. The specs on this, it's a 325 centimeter or 10 foot 9 inch rod. It's seven segments. It has a nine and a half inch high density EVA grip uh, and it weighs in at about 1.9 ounces. It's 24 inches long collapsed. So if you look at the collapsed, um, you know, here's the Iwana, the Tenkara USA Iwana. So that's what it looks like. So you know, 23, 24 inches long. Uh, that fits into a pack just fine. It's 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 a pack rod. Uh, it comes with this cool tube. It's a uh, some kind of hard plastic. I don't know if it's vinyl, but it's rigid. It's more rigid than say this one. Um, and that weighs about three and a half ounces, I think. So pack weight, total pack weight with everything. Um, with the the rod tube the the rod it came with a rod sock i'm assuming it comes with a rod sock when you buy it uh, so that all together let's see that weighed uh, 6.1 ounces or 175 grams i also took out with me but one of my custom three weight rods so the length on this this is a seven foot nine inch uh, four piece rod uh, the difference between the two rods that I packed out, so, you know, only a couple inches. The Tenkara Tanuki, um, the overall weight, uh, packed weight was 6.1 ounces. Uh, my custom three weight, when it's packed with uh, the reel, and this is the uh, Reddington Zero, the small one. Um, and that reel weighs in at three and a half ounces. So total uh, weighs uh, 11.6 ounces. So it's double the weight. But the convenience of a 10 car rod on those streams and, and as a backpacking rod can't be disputed too much. It's, it's you know, one little package. Uh, you know, you need very little. It's very simple. Um, you rely more on technique than you do on tackle. I mean, you can do that with a Western fly rod too. Uh, in fact, I did this go around. Uh, I only used two flies the entire uh, trip. Uh, I, I probably used three, but I switched uh, to two flies. Um, they're very similar. And here are the flies. That was what worked. So one being weighted, um, lightly weighted with a bead and one uh, just a soft hackle. And with the Western rod, I fished the beaded uh, fly under a small indicator, small foam indicator. Uh, there's a belief out there that uh, Appalachian streams are all these uh, tiny brushy little runs um, that require you to fish with a short rod. So, um, you know, you tend to see uh, anglers who are targeting brook trout, uh, at least here in the mid-Atlantic, um, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for either um, a shorter Tenkara rod or, um, uh, you know, and by short, I mean, you know, I've seen them as short as eight, eight feet um, uh, and nine feet. So I did stream test the uh, Tanuki uh, 275, which was a nine foot rod. Um, in one of my previous videos. Um, however, the actual comments I had about the rod uh, didn't, didn't come out in the video because my audio crapped out. So, um, but I will tell you that it, while it was a, a wonderful rod, um, it just didn't do what I wanted it to do. It did, I fish a little differently, I guess, than some, some of the Tenkara anglers. I like a longer rod for most of my streams uh, that I fish. So I would say for me, um, 
the smallest I really want to go is 10 and a half feet. Um, and that's about right. Um, for, I, I would say Seneca Creek, you could go even longer. So, um, yes, there were times when I wanted a longer rod, but you know, I may do. So, uh, you know, you just move a little closer, you're a little bit more stealthy. Uh, yes, you have to get into the water sometimes. Um, but as you can see in, in some of these clips, you know, it, it's just not, uh, there's not brush growing up on all the banks and 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 there is access and um yeah i hung up once on a branch um it, it is a uh, uh a beautiful stream that has a lot of variety um and that's why i like it so there's um good high gradient areas where even waterfalls um and you've got these sort of stair-stepped pools all over the place and you know in some places it's wide and riffly and in others it's you know the water just funnels down into a chute and then at the bottom of the chute there's this there's this wonderful plunge pool that holds fish as well on day two hiked about two miles fishing along the way um, and then I fished my western rod, my custom rod, on the way back. Uh, so I hit some of the pools that were, in my opinion, better suited for a western rod. In other words, you know, drop a wet fly or a nymph under an under indicator. I was actually able to successfully fish the pools I couldn't with the Tenkara rod. And that, that might speak to my uh, skill level um, because I am probably more skilled as a western fly fisherman uh, than a Tenkara one. But when it comes to the pocket water uh, on uh, Seneca Creek, there are these areas where the river, where the stream just widens up and it's just, there's rocks and boulders and, and you can just hop around and fish all these, you know, one, two foot deep pools and it's just loaded with fish. Um, now the type of fish vary. Uh, so there are, it, they are all wild fish in that, in that creek. Uh, it's brook trout above the falls and some rainbow, um, but wild rainbow predominantly is what I've encountered um, below the falls. So water conditions were really good. Um, 56 degrees, the fish were active, it was overcast. There were little bouts of, of, of wind, but um, uh, overall it was calm. You know, we didn't really put fish down unless we were crossing streams. Um, and most of the time we weren't fishing in those spots anyway. Um, I did not see any bugs on the water, uh, so and the fish were not rising. So everything was subsurface. Uh, so the, the wet flies were, the, were all I used. All right, the conditions uh, during that trip, um, so it, it was rainy. In fact, um, I got to the trailhead uh, a few hours before everyone and started hiking in, wanted to claim a, a site, a campsite. Uh, um, so I hiked in and about four miles the day we were filming, it didn't rain until late in the day after uh, we got back from doing our filming. So it was overcast. It was great conditions, actually. So, you know, on some of those streams, you, you don't really want those bluebird days. Um, the fish are really skittish. These fish were really active. The water temperature was at 56, and this is late summer. I think I still would have had a good time fishing in the rain. Overall, I really like this rod. If you were gonna have one Tenkara rod to fish Appalachian streams in the mid-Atlantic like I do, this is a good choice. 10 and a half feet, the 325 is a good length. I probably wouldn't go shorter. It has a nice soft tip, but good backbone. So you can do delicate work with it. You could, you could cast just about any fly you're gonna need to cast on those streams. It packs down okay. Not great. I would prefer it to be shorter. 
but I can live with that. It still fits in my pack. The price is right at $200, free shipping. And I would recommend it for all skill levels. It's a good rod to grow into. Uh, I would start with 3.5 level line and uh, go down as far as maybe 2.5 uh, as your skills get better. I hope my review of the Snow Tanuki 325 has been helpful. Head on over to TankaraTanuki.com and check out their products. Thanks for watching.